following video is a research sprint of the first hour I would take on a strategy project. It came from a request in the Planning Dirty Academy where someone had gone through the whole research module and now they wanted to see the tools in action. This focuses on desk research and how you can get a lot of value before you go out and start interviewing people. I've recently read the book Dark Emu is a book that goes through how Aboriginals were actually farmers and not hunter gatherers. And Bruce, who's the author of it, kind of puts a call to arms out in the book saying that we should be really highlighting Aboriginal produce. The produce that he highlights would be the Murnong yam and getting Australians to eat the Murnong yam. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do in this video. Let's jump in. So to begin with, I just put a timer on for 55 minutes. I wanted to use the last five minutes to make sure I'm refining what I wrote. So I did that and then the very first thing is I just opened a Word doc and created a client's brief and timing. So what I've done here is kind of put one, um, I've got one page where I wanna have all the questions so I know I'm coming back to something always so here you see i've got the get who to buy and then i've got a couple of questions that i wanted to ask murnong yams obviously know nothing about so the questions i've got are what are murnong yams who eats them currently why do people not eat them which would be the consumer problem statement and then uh, why they do eat them so started the search easy google murnong yams i'm in wikipedia I think the first thing that I found was that they're also called daisy yams or yam daisies. And I think this is key because it's a name that's easier to remember. And so when we think about something like this new product, having a name that's easier, easier handle to understand is gonna be key. So I wrote that down, put that into my sheet as well. And then I'm looking for other things um, to do with the Murnong yam. So I just kind of had how they were cooked to begin with. And then the second article is by the SBS. And the title, I often think the titles um, or the first paragraph often have insights in them or keywords. And here I've pulled out the word native super fruit, superfood and nutritious as potato and taste as sweet as coconut. Great, great words to describe this product. So I'm making sure I'm getting that into it as well. So here I'm pulling out um, some more words around the taste profile because we're going to have to explain what this tastes like. So just putting that there. What I realized was when I started to do this, I actually don't usually do Google Drive presentations. And I mean, I don't have my notes. I usually have my notes on a notepad. So doing it online, I found that a bit more messy. And so I actually was just shuffling everything back to a, um, like it was an appendix of that page. A little later in this piece, what I found was the actual book that I read. So Bruce Pascoe and this great quote that he had here of, um, and I knew it was an insight because I saw the but statement in it, but this great quote, which was Australian Aborigines have been labeled as hunter and gatherers for 220 years but pioneers and explorers saw a very different economy. Um, so I was making sure that I captured that. Uh, Aborigines were growing and harvesting a huge variety of grains, tubers and fruits, as well as building large aquatic scent, aquacultural systems. So this was key because it's really, that is a revelation. People thought of them as hunter gatherers, but what uh, Bruce Pascoe found was they were actually uh, farmers. And so this is gonna be a big piece. I'm just making sure that I source it all properly here and reading through the rest of the article. At this point, I kind of was questioning whether we had the right problem. Was it really get more Australians to eat than native yams? Because everything here, that, this was kind of a step that you have where you're questioning the business problem. Everything was saying that it was all about the rareness of these native yams. That's why people weren't buying them. So my question kind of came back to, are we answering the right piece? 
should it be about more that people should be planting native yams or daisy, the daisy yams? But I, I realized, I know this is a hypothetical project, but for this project, I'm just assuming that they do have a lot of these yams, daisy yams, because that's what they've asked. So not to kind of send myself on another trail, I just decided that they do have yams. This restaurant, Orana, came up in the article. So I wanted to read a little bit more about this as they were an indigenous restaurant. So sounds like they'll have yams on the menu. And again, if I'm trying to get this through chefs to begin with, amazing that we've got this case where someone's already doing it. So often you'll find, um, you know, it's kind of like consumer interviews or expert interviews. This, I'm finding it in their websites, the, uh, the information, and it unlocks a big one here. What I came across was this great quote, which was, for the past few years, we've been thinking and working with elders on, on country to give their culture a voice through food, and a meal at Restaurant Orana is an insight into shared learning. So I really liked that. I really liked that idea there of give their culture a voice through food because um, we don't often put culture like the words through um, food experiencing culture through food it kind of makes sense and I think he just wrapped it up really nicely there so again just reading a little bit more through the website and then I pull out here as well how he actually uses the yam so what ingredients he uses and how he makes that come to life as an ingredient and it sounds like kind of potato chips uh, so that's the alternative here again I've kind of gone for another chef and I feel like he's um, in this article he talks about meal as education again interesting all these meals or food as um, a step into culture food as a way of education and this just sparked in my brain I think the first kind of insight that I had which was when you think about this food it's kind of like the polar opposites and that's what I'm really looking for with insights as well the antithesis and the tension because you think of yams or potatoes and often we think of them as the most boring you know meat and potatoes the most boring food going around and here we've got the daisy yams and it's an explosion of education and culture it's not just this boring thing it's actually really exciting because it's making you relook at um, Australian history. So I'm getting excited here because I can see the insight kind of coming through. And this is, again, it's you would say these like expert interviews and when I would put this together, I would kind of have the quote from the chef who's talking about it. And it's a really good piece. Again, he gives another great piece up here of it's impossible to experience in a city. You can't get a bowl of ramen. You can get a bowl of ramen, great steaks and everything in between, but no pig face fruit. So he's talking about another uh, Aboriginal piece of food here. But I love the idea because we often think about uh, cities as accessible, that you, know, you can get everything in the city. And here he's saying that you actually don't. And so again, a really nice tension that I'm looking for and I kind of just write it quickly. Cities usually stand for access when it comes to food, but when it comes to these yams, they're not accessible and it's not something that everyone can get. And pulling a quote again from this yamdaisies.com. So it's a, a cafe, but they go into detail about the yam daisy. So just trying to find more information. I found this local group that do yam daisies uh, that harvest them. Again, it looks really hard to get uh, yam daisies. I'm just kind of thinking now, I kind of just got to this point and I, I got a little bit stuck. I was like, I knew I was running out of time and I was trying to work out, I think I need to have like a, a, a go at the get who to buy or, or try to work out um, some other pieces of this so I don't go too far down the rabbit hole. So I kind of took a moment to pause and write out what I knew as the kind of consumer problem. I also had just some ideas in the back of my head that I kind of knew about the culture. And I think this is stuff you always bring into the, the presentation. So 
at the moment, you know, in Australia, Australia Day is kind of looked at in this kind of, uh, it's kind of a very controversial subject because the day that we chose was the day when um, the English uh, claimed Australia as their own. And so this is uh, has been something we've celebrated for a long time, but over the last couple of years, a lot of people are starting to see it now as what it is, is maybe Invasion Day. And it's actually a day of, um, instead of celebration, maybe it's a sorrow because we're robbing Indigenous people of their land. So I think that here is something coming to life. I like the word of like culture is being eroded. And I think that that's what these yams are offering us a new way back into that culture. I knew I was running out of time here. So I want, I wanted to, I didn't, I didn't feel like I had answered that question of how do you eat yams? So I went on a little bit of an expedition of how are we going to eat these yams? and came up with, it's interesting, There's a, with Australia Day, there is also a big push around eating lamb. Um, and lambs were the actual thing that destroyed the land, which destroyed yam daisies. So they were brought by the English, but they're seen as this, it's Australian to eat lamb. We're really, the revelation here is, it's actually the worst thing. They were the thing that kind of stopped Australia from eating, um, from from uh, yams being mainstream and kind of eroded an Aboriginal culture or played a part. I'm trying to find a recipe, I'm really struggling at this point to pull out any recipe at all. So I'm back getting into the two. I was trying to write a two. So I've got chefs up the top there as my target market and was trying to write a two that would have um, the actual ingredients or what we're actually trying to make because i think for a lot of products like this you kind of want uh some a dessert or something that people can make kind of just staying yam daisies isn't going to be enough you've got to like appetite kind of get them excited about that as well so here last pieces i'm just trying to bring it all together again um the last insight that i'd kind of held on to is Growing up, I always um, had been told that people go to Europe for culture, like Australia doesn't have any culture. It's so young um, compared with other countries and we don't have a clear sense of identity. And I think um, it's actually the opposite of that. We do have a lot of culture, but it's Aboriginal culture and a lot of people are thinking in a very European perspective. And I think the Yam Daisies plays an important role here as they are the connection. So here I've set myself, I've hit the five minute mark and I'm actually setting myself um, time to write out these insights. And here I've got, uh, I'm just writing the insights. So I'm taking those polar opposites and just decided to land in on the insights. And that's what I'm gonna take away from it. I don't think I've got enough information for a get to buy. So my first one is Potatoes are the most boring basic food. Daisy yams are an explosion of education and culture. So again, you're trying to pull in the tensions here or the opposites into your statements. Uh, the second one I, I'm doing here is around the cultural cringe. People, Australians cringe about their own culture, but really we've got one of the earliest cultures going around. So I've kind of pulled back here and got the statement of eating the oldest culture in the world. Um, there's something around that, like eating culture is really interesting. So I was pulling that out. Um, the oldest surviving culture in the world, I remember reading about that. So I really wanted to pull those learnings in. So I kind of just headlined them because I needed some handle to remember them. So I've got one insight around eating education like you're getting educated about your history when you're eating the yam. So it's more than just a, you know, it's more than the potato. It's something that's got some culture to it. Uh, here I've got eating culture. And then I just wanted to try to make that analogy here. We've got Italian equals pasta, German equals sausage, Spain equals paella, paella. Um, Australians cuisine equals yams and kind of kangaroo meat. Uh, we learn about culture through our mouth taste buds 
education is all senses. I've kind of the last thing I had was um, in eating culture. We underestimate the amount of culture in Australia. Something around underestimate. I would change that word to something about like missing missing food or something. So we're it's what we miss in foraging. And here I've just gone for it. Just I think I'm over time now, and I'm just going for a get who to buy here. Um, just trying to fill it out. You can see I'm doing it all over the place with the order. So it ends up being get Australians who have woken up to Aboriginal culture being a key to our history, but don't know how to celebrate or recognise it. To buy daisy yams as a way of celebrating our culture on Australia Day. I kind of left off the day there. By buy daisy yams are a way to revive the oldest culture in the world. Um, food pillar, food is a key pillar to cultural acknowledgement. So a bit rough, but that was 60 minutes of uh, doing an insight and kind of coming up with that campaign. So I was pretty happy, you know, I might do another video that shows where I take it from here, but I just wanted to show you where was my initial research on this campaign. So I hope that helps. Um, let me know and uh, we'll talk about it soon.